Our next story is from Northern Ireland. They're witnessing a historic moment. They finally have a government after two years, and that too led by a nationalist. Her name is Michelle O'Neill. She's the first, the new first minister. She belongs to pro-United Ireland party called Sinn Féin. And why is this a historic moment? Because for the first time in 100 years, the top job is held by a nationalist. What does that mean? To understand that, we have to go back in history. The year was 1921. Ireland was partitioned. One part was the Republic of Ireland. It got independence from Britain the next year. The other part was what we know as Northern Ireland. It remained with Britain. But tension simmered on between two parties, the Unionists who were loyal to the British Crown and the Nationalists who wanted a united Ireland. These two parties often clashed. By the 1960s, things turned bloody. The police got involved. There was rampant conflict over three decades. Finally, in 1998, they signed the Good Friday Agreement, a deal that gave Northern Ireland a unique style of governance where both the sides, Unionists and Nationalists, share power. They run the government together. Whichever side gets more votes elects the first minister. That's what their leader is called, the first minister. The side with lesser votes chooses the deputy first minister. In 2022, the nationalists got more votes. That's the Sinn Féin. They swept the polls. It was a significant message from the voters. This party has a violent past. They've been associated with the Irish Republican Army, IRA, a paramilitary organization fighting for a united Ireland. In fact, O'Neill herself has links to the IRA. Her father was jailed for being an IRA member. Her uncle raised money for the IRA. One of her cousins was killed by a British elite regiment. So her election is a big deal. Assembly for all, Catholic, Protestant and dissenter. Despite our different outlooks and our different views in the future constitutional position, the public rightly demand that we, that we work together and that we deliver together. And also that we must build trust and confidence in our ability to collectively do that. That said, it's highly symbolic. You see, she may be called First Minister, but she must share power equally with the Deputy First Minister. The titles may be different, but the powers are the same. Which also brings us to the question, if this party won in 2022, why are they coming to power now? Like the root of all problems in the UK, the answer here too is Brexit. After the UK left the European Union, Northern Ireland was left with a problem. It shared a border with, a, with an EU country, the Republic of Ireland. So the two sides needed border checks, especially for trade. But the UK was wary of touching that border given the long history of conflict. So it decided to implement the Northern Ireland Protocol. And what is that? Any product traveling between Britain and Ireland would be checked at Northern Ireland instead. This angered the Unionists. They said it undermined Ireland's position. So after the 2022 election, they refused to allow government formation. Negotiations began first with the Boris Johnson government, then with Rishi Sunak's government. The impasse continued until last Thursday. That's when they finally agreed to a deal. It will end post-Brexit checks on goods. It will also secure Northern Ireland's position in the UK. So finally, after two years, the deadlock has ended. The Northern Ireland Assembly is back in action and they have a nationalist at the helm. O'Neill says a united Ireland is within touching distance. What does that mean? Very little beyond the symbolism. You see, this was a long impasse. With its end, Northern Ireland has its task cut out to fix its struggling health and public services. They're more likely to focus on running the government than changing their status, at least for now. From impeachments to inaugurations, if it's a political story, we are on the scene. The race for the White House is heating up. We're beating Biden. How dare he say that? If it's breaking news, we're live with the latest coverage. From the White House, the State Department, and Capitol Hill, we know the issues, but above all, we know the players to bring you the latest in-depth analysis on all the key stories that we're covering. I'm Eric Ham. Join me from Washington here on First Post America.